Hello everyone, my name is Drew Coles and I am currently a junior at Marquette University. I am a domestic industrials analyst for Marquette's Applied Investment Management Program and today I am going to be presenting the stock Excellus Technologies with a ticker of ACLS. To begin, Excellus Technologies is an industrial technology company that focuses on the design, manufacture, and service of ion implantation systems and other capital equipment used in the creation of semiconductor chips. The company operates worldwide with Excellus products currently located in over 32 different countries globally. The, the products being produced include semiconductors for advanced logic, aka smartphone systems, image sensors, mature process technologies, which is headlined by the Perion product line, memory systems, and power devices. The company was incorporated from Easton Semiconductor Company in 1995 and had its initial public offering in 2000. It is currently headquartered in Beverly, Massachusetts, and on the right you can see some key metrics about the stock and a one-year chart of its price history. It is recommended that the AIM Equity Fund purchase shares in Excellus Technologies at 3726 with a price target of 4286 representing just over a 14% potential upside. The reasoning behind this recommendation starts with Excellus being due to benefit from the overall semiconductor market, which saw revenue growth of 5.4% in 2020 and is forecasted to do the same in 2021. Furthermore, despite Excellus Technologies already being the industry leader in ion implantation systems, their revenue is expected to more than double by 2025 largely due to some specific trends that the world is showing, such as 5G networks, electric vehicles, and working from home, all of which require new semiconductor technology. Finally, behind ACLS's new Perion product line and overseas opportunities, the company will continue to grow and increase their shareholder value. Looking forward, ACLS has a tremendous opportunity to drive the revenues up in expanding markets like China and Japan. In fact, management feels extremely optimistic about these opportunities and can mainly attribute that optimism to their main new flagship product line. This product line is called the Purion product and it includes different extensions. These products are like none other seen before due to their ability to handle multiple wafer sizes between 150 millimeters to 300 millimeters, various substrates, and precision wafer temperature control technology, all while still delivering the highest throughput and capital efficiency on the market today. As far as actual expansion overseas goes, the first Purion XE was just installed in Japan this past year, and management has plans for more in 2021. With Japan representing 15% of the total addressable market and market revenue exceeding 35 billion, there is great potential for future growth there. Furthermore, with China now becoming the world's largest semiconductor market, encompassing over 60% of the global consumption for semiconductors, business with companies like Samsung and Taiwan Semiconductor Company are expected to remain strong throughout. The second driver is related to free cash flow growth, with the industry appearing to be fundamentally strong due to trends like 5G networks, the Internet of Things 2.0, and working from home, the demand for semiconductors and mature process technology will continue to remain strong. For ACLS, revenue is expected to grow at a CAGR of 14.82% over the next five years. Cash from operations is expected to grow at a rate of 116% over the next six years, and CapEx is estimated to grow at a rate of 137% during the same time period. These things combined, management expects free cash flow growth to be greater than 17% of revenue by 2022, which would be a 3.8% increase from their 2020 level of 13.2%. The final driver relates to the growing electric market in society today. With the Biden administration planning to enact a $400 billion research and development spending plan for batteries, electric vehicles, and charging stations, ACLS will be able to capitalize on this relatively new and growing market. In fact, this market is forecasted to make up 70% of estimated product revenue for ACLS in 2021. Furthermore, with electric car companies like Tesla already using ACLS's products in the production of their vehicles, 
the demand for their products will only continue to rise with the power electronics market being expected to reach $39 billion by 2025. An intrinsic value for ACLS was reached by completing a 10-year DCF model. With a terminal growth rate of 2% and a WAC of 8.07%, an intrinsic value of $42.72 was reached. A sensitivity analysis of plus minus 50 basis points on the terminal growth rate and plus minus 100 basis points on the discount rate resulted in a range of $35.01 to $57.26. Additionally, a price of sales valuation was conducted. Using a peer average multiple of 1.02, a relative value of $38.11 was reached. Finally, an EV to EBITDA valuation produced a peer average multiple of 1.29 and a relative valuation of $48.03. By weighting these three methods, 60%, 20%, 20%, a price target of $42.86 was reached, resulting in a 14.33% potential upside. Next, we have ACLS and their investment risks. The first being international uncertainty. With ion implantation systems to Asia representing 87.7% of total system shipping dollars in 2019, ACLS is subject to great revenue loss if relationships with overseas customers sour. Secondly, we have industry competition. It is imperative for ACLS that they continue to develop and improve products that will generate future value for the company. If ACLS is not able to beat out competitors in the industry, profitability will be adversely affected. Finally, ACLS is in a very fast-paced industry. If they cannot accurately predict where the industry is going in short term, they will be subject to a decrease in revenue. The leadership team at ACLS is made up of individuals with years of experience in the industry and are a key reason for the company's recent success. Mary Puma has been the CEO of ACLS since 2002 and has gained over 22 years of experience in the semiconductor industry since joining it in 1998. The CFO and Executive VP of the company is Kevin Brewer. He holds over 21 years with the company and also has prior experience as a Director of Operations at Raytheon Aircraft Company. John Aldeborg is the Executive VP of Customer Operations and has been with the company for seven years. Next is Bill Bintz, who is the Executive VP of Product Development and has been with the company for 15 years. Finally, Lynette Fallon is the Executive VP of Human Resources and has been with the company for 19 years. To conclude, Excellus Technologies has well positioned themselves to take advantage of the emerging global semiconductor market. With these markets hovering around all-time highs, this is an opportunity that should not be passed on by the AIM program. Thank you for all taking the time to watch my presentation, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. My email is drew.coles at marquette.edu, and I will also actively respond on the D2L discussion board. Thanks again.